Happy Camper Radio, episode 40. Come on, let's go camping. Welcome back to our show, my friends. I'm Skip. I am a happy camper, and you can be one, too. It's great to have you on board. This is the final episode of 2013. In a few days from now, we'll be breaking in the new year. Have you got a lot of camping plans lined up for 2014? I know I have. I'm going to try to get out there as often as I possibly can. Unlike Christmas, no, I have never camped on New Year's Eve. I have never sat around a campfire to break in a brand new year, but you never know what's going to happen later down the road. Our phone number here is 404-537-CAMP. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker, and add us to your circles on Google+. Of course, you can access any one of our social media sites by going to our homepage, which is www.happycamperradio.com. And while you're there, feel free to browse around, check out some of the pictures and some of the things we have to offer. You can also listen to any one of our previous podcasts right there on our homepage by clicking on the podcast episodes tab right at the top of the page. Let's right now gather around our campfire. I am going to light the campfire and get this place nice, all warm and toasty. And all we need is you. Just grab your camping chair, grab uh, your buddy, uh, grab any anybody you want to bring along to because there's always one room for one more here at our campsite. I have an interesting topic to uh, discuss with you this year. I had a few friends uh, talk to me about it this week and they said, why don't you just wait till maybe spring or summertime? when it's probably a little more important. Well, it all really depends upon what region of the country you're in. Today, we're going to be talking about boating safety. It's never too unimportant to talk about because whether you are boating, whether you are driving a car, safety is an important factor. Have you ever been to a boat show before? I have, and I will tell you this. Some of the boats that they're making today are like homes some of them are monstrous, some of them are small. There's a, there's a lot of them out there. I'll be talking to you about that here in just a little bit. But I have oftentimes dreamt of dragging a boat along with me to a campground because when I go camping, I try to focus my attention on areas where there is a large lake nearby. And I always try to locate a campsite at a particular campground where it is visible from at least to where I'm camped out at. There is one campsite that I visit in the spring and summertime, and I try to go down there a couple times a year, if at all possible. It's not very far from where I live, maybe about 100 miles southwest, and it sits on West Point Lake, which is right there on the border of Georgia and Alabama. There's one particular campground. It's the R. Schaefer Herd Campground. I believe I featured that at one of our uh, very first episodes of the program if you happen to go back there and want to uh, uh, go back and listen to it. But when I go there, I try to get site number 88 each and every time. The very first time I visited that campground, I selected site 88 online because it looked like it was very accessible to the lake. And when I arrived, the camp host said, that's one of the most popular sites in the entire campground. It's partially shaded. You can walk to the lake, which is about 50 feet away from the, the fire ring. And when I go there, I try to spend some time by the fire. I also try to spend some time down there at the lake, especially at nighttime when that moon is full and that moon is just gazing across the water. It is so relaxing. Every now and then you will hear the sound of a boat motor way off in the distance. And sometimes I sit there and say to myself, wow, I wish that were me. There are people who uh, go camping and go boating. There are some people who, like myself, just go camping and wish they were boating. And some people just aren't into boating at all. But I have oftentimes dreamt of owning a boat. Years ago, 
I was working at a boat show here in town in a law enforcement capacity doing security. And a friend of mine way back then who I got to know, he's much older than I am and I haven't talked to him in quite a long time, but he kind of pulled my coattail and I was, I was kind of young back then. I laid my eyes on this beautiful pontoon boat that I just fell in love with when I saw it. And I saw the price tag on it and I says, wow, you know, I could work some extra jobs here for maybe about a year and pay this thing off. This will work out great. And before that show was over, he says, don't do it. He says, you'll be sorry if you did. And the best advice I ever took from him. Because I would have spent a lot of money on that boat and would have had n not a lot of time in my schedule to enjoy it between hauling it to the lake and spending time out there on the lake with that boat, with my family, when I could get them together, that just really wasn't going to happen. And it wouldn't have been worth my money. Uh, they wouldn't have been, uh, you know, I, it just wouldn't have worked out. That's what I'm trying to say. But a lot of people do go to these boat shows and it usually draws a crowd. It's about a week long and they're usually in every major metropolitan city across America at one point in time each year. But a lot of these folks who go to these boat shows do there for the purpose of dreaming. Nothing more than that. I have walked on some boats that, that just made your mouth water. And so have a lot of other people. And when you do that, you say to yourself, there's just no way I could afford this. So, you know, a lot of people go there for the purpose of dreaming. There are speed boats, there's pontoon boats, house boats, sail boats, fishing boats, boats of all kinds. Many of them cost several thousand dollars. Have you ever thought about maybe renting a boat? In just a little while, we're going to be talking to somebody who specializes in peer-to-peer -peer rentals who uh, got together with us on Google Plus here not too long ago. And we're going to be talking to him about boat rentals. This is another possibility. If you're not into buying a boat, if you don't want to buy a boat that you're uh, going to be concerned that that boat's going to be sitting in your driveway maybe 90% of the year and you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, you may consider renting one. Those possibilities do exist. And I hope you stick around for that interview. Now, one of the things I want to speak to you about concerning safety we do have on our homepage at happycamperradio.com a, um, a safety tab at the top of the page. And you click on it and you're going to find a uh, boating safety page. And it's put together by the Centers for Disease Control. And it shows some very interesting t statistics here. What you need to keep in mind that if you are driving a car, you need to be concerned about safety. If you're driving a boat, you need to be concerned about safety also. In 2009, there were 3,358 people injured and 736 people died in boating-related incidents. That's a lot. Even though boating is a recreational activity, there are rules out there on the lake just as there are rules out on the road. Now, of all those people in those incidents, of the uh, 736 people who died in the boating-related incidents, 9 out of 10 were not wearing life jackets. Of those who drowned, 9 out of 10 did not have on some safety, safety vest. Of the people who died in boating incidents in 2009, more than 7 out of 10, that's 70%, 73% had drowned. More than 90% of the people who drowned, again, were not wearing life jackets. Some scary statistics there, folks, but that's reality. When you go to a lake, when you go anywhere to uh, have fun out on a boat, I don't care how big the lake is, I don't care how big the ocean is, you know, you've got to keep safety in mind. If you're the navigator of that boat, if you're the, uh, the pilot, if you want to call them that, if you're the driver, you have people on board. You are responsible for your safety and the safety of everybody else, not just on your boat, but other boaters who may be out there enjoying their fun in the sun just like you. It's important that everybody has a Coast Guard-approved flotation device. 
And just because you have five people aboard your vessel and five life vests, that does not necessarily mean that uh, you're going to be in a safe position if those five people, yourself included, are not wearing those vests. Just because you're going boating and the law says you have to have uh, five vests, you have to have a life vest for everybody on board, those vests are not going to do you no good. If you run into a bad situation out there, you have people who accidentally or for one reason or another fall overboard and are not wearing those vests. It is important that you and everybody on that boat be wearing a vest and wear it at all times while you're on the water, including at dock. They do make Coast Guard approved flotation devices for both young people and old people, children and adults. You don't need to be putting a, an adult vest on a child. A child vest is going to be long on a child and an adult vest is going to be long on an adult. Make sure you adjust it for proper fit. Also, these inflatable devices that you find in toy stores. If you've ever been to a public swimming pool or a private swimming pool and you may see a young child just learning to swim and maybe mom has these little blow-up uh, flotation devices on, the, on each of their arms the just above the elbow, my friends, those are not, those are not Coast Guard approved flotation devices. Those are the ones you should be wearing only, the ones that are approved by the U.S. Coast Guard. Have you ever enjoyed camping next to a lake like I have? Like I said, you know, it's 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 an experience. I, I live for it every opportunity I get. I think you ought to do the same if you haven't at least tried it. And maybe you may get drawn into the world of boating just like I did. I have a great time when I do it. So, you know, just check it out. And, uh, you know, next time you're planning a, a venture out there somewhere with family, friends, or loved ones, Try camping by a lake, and uh, just if, if you're not going to get into the boating scene, you know, just sit back there and watch the folks out on the lake, and it won't take you long before you say to yourself, this is something I really, really want to do. Hey, don't forget, check out our Family Camping and Adventure Forum. It's brand new, and it's right there on our homepage. All you've got to do is click on it to sign up. It is a new form that we put together. We had a few folks sign up this past week. We've got a few messages posted on the board there. Anything related to camping, anything you want to talk about, all you've got to do is sign up. I am your host. I go by the screen name Camp Talker. It couldn't be more appropriate for a guy like me. But uh, feel free to go ahead and sign up and join if you can, uh, you know, join in on the conversation. Great. If you have a new topic you want to discuss, start a new thread. That's what it's all about. Once we get the membership all built up there and have maybe 30 or 40 folks along, you never know. Every now and then from time to time, we can gather together in the fireside chat room for a live chat. I would love to have the opportunity to chat one-on-one -on -one with many of our listeners here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. As I mentioned, we have an interview here that we uh, set up here a couple weeks ago, and we've got a great, wonderful uh, topic to discuss with you today. If you're into boating and you don't want to go through the hassles of buying a boat, you may find one for rent somewhere. And there's one easy website you can go to to make that happen. We're going to talk right now with Sean Gardner of fun2rent.com. Let's go to the phone lines. Joining us now on the Happy Camper Radio Show from out on the West Coast in California is Sean Gardner from fun2rent.com. Sean, welcome to the program. Hi, thank you for having me on the show today. Oh, how's the weather out there treating you? Uh, it's beautiful. We're in uh, San Jose, California, and it's about uh, 60 degrees here. A uh, far cry from what it is up on the East Coast right about now. The snow is coming down. You know, of course, it's pretty nice out here on the uh, on the East Coast in the southern part where we're located. But, uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a great time of the year. Things are getting very festive regardless of uh, what the weather is looking. Sean, tell us a little bit about fun2rent.com and how the peer-to-peer -peer rental system works. Uh, fun to rent is a peer-to-peer -peer site for rentals of boats and power sports. Uh, the power sports are the off-road vehicles and vessels uh, like just jet skis, 
ATVs, uh, the UTVs that are getting very popular, even dirt bikes and um, camping trailers as well. I was really surprised because, you know, I'm the type of a guy, I do a lot of camping, and usually when I'm camping, I like to select a spot by the lake. And even though I kind of pump up the fact that I enjoy camping by the fire and sitting by the fire most of the day, I don't really get out all that much. But from time to time, I like to take my recliner and go down by the lake and just sit there, whether it be day or night, and watch the boats out there. And I get kind of jealous some, in some ways because I say to myself, wow, wouldn't it be nice to own a watercraft like that? And, you know, even though even though I may be able to afford one, the bottom line is I really wouldn't have the time to go out and enjoy it to really make it, uh, make my money's worth on it. Uh, but what, is your, what you're saying right now, I don't have to worry about that. If I want to rent a watercraft, I can go to your website and make that process very simple. Is that correct? Exactly. That's the beauty of, of our marketplace is that owners of the equipment are able to money on their equipment when it's sitting idle, which is generally about 95% of the time. Um, and if you're, uh, you know, don't have the funds or the ability to store it or um, all the maintenance costs associated with owning, uh, you can rent from your neighbor and uh, rent it for the weekend and take out the boat and then it's on your terms and you don't have to worry about all the extra costs associated with owning. That sounds very, very impressive. Um, is your rentals available in all 50 states? In other words, if I, if I went to your website right now and say I lived out in Colorado or maybe I lived up in Pennsylvania, I could actually go there and find somebody near where I live who may have a rental available for me to go ahead and, and uh, work out a deal with and uh, go out and enjoy the weekend. Is that correct? Uh, so we are building up our rim, rental inventory right now. Uh, we have listings in about 18 states, um, so we're not completely covered across the U.S. right now. Uh, however, uh, you have a boat that sits across the street from you, and uh, you want us to talk to that neighbor, you know, send us their name and address, and we'll help them get on the site so you can get out in their boat. Yes. Um, our insurance covers both the owners and the renters for liability, as well as insurance coverage on the vehicle or vessel that's rented. So it's uh, a win-win for everyone. Sure. Well, if you're available uh, in 18 states so far, it sounds like you're well on your way. And I, I know down here in, in Georgia, we have got a lot of lakes nearby, and there's a lot of watercrafts out there. And the closer you get to the lake, you see more and more residents with uh, watercrafts parked outside. And a lot of times, you know, it looks like they haven't been moved in a very long time. And as you say, you know, it will be a win-win situation for somebody who owns the watercraft as well as for somebody, you know, who doesn't want to spend maybe eighteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 on a speedboat to uh, actually just take it out once or twice a year because, you know, you're not going to get your money's worth on that. Yeah, correct, correct. And, and these boats do sit idle a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, National Marine Manufacturers Association says that uh, the average boat owner uses his boat two weeks a year. We think it's uh, a little bit less than that because uh, we all have to work so hard to own one of these boats. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, I price some of these watercrafts today, too. You know, any anytime I go to, like, you know, one of the, the big box camping stores that, that sell these watercrafts, they're sometimes just as much as a brand-new automobile, automobile, maybe even more. Yes, yes, uh, they are a very high-end asset, correct. Now, what kind of requirements are available to, uh, or should I say, what kind of requirements are necessary to rent, say, maybe a watercraft, an RV, or an ATV? If, if I want to go out and uh, go ahead and get involved in, in the rental process, I, I spotted somebody who, who has one of these watercrafts that I want to take out on the lake. What will be required on my end if I want to go ahead and rent that? Is this something I can go to your website and, and get all that information? Yes, correct, correct. Uh, we got a section on our website called How It Works. And uh, if you're looking to rent, uh, a boat or one of the off-road vehicles. Uh, we do have a small safety quiz, and also your state also may require, depending on your age and stuff, uh, a boater safety certificate or an ATV safety certificate. Okay. Um, 
if you do need a safety certificate and don't have one, uh, we have links on our site to an online safety course. And we'll actually even give you $5 off the course. Great. Okay. And uh, the other requirements we have is, is uh, for renters, they have to be over 21, a valid driver's license, and a valid credit card. All right. Are there any other type of credit requirements or background check requirements necessary, or should I say maybe a formal screening process involved here? Because, you know, we, we understand that, you know, some of these watercrafts and ATVs, they, they cost a lot of money, and you don't want to get anybody that's, uh, you know, real shady to go out there and rent one of these, and then, you know, the owner never sees his equipment again. Uh, with the driver's license information that we get, um, we do have some requirements about no DUIs and no reckless driving in their driving records. Um, yeah. Other than that, you know, if they have a, a good driving record, uh, we do also charge their credit card. Uh, we put a hold on their credit card for a deposit, and the deposit can be used as a deductible for the insurance policy if uh, something drastic happens during the rental transaction. Yeah, that insurance, I can understand, yeah. is going to be very important in a, in a process like this. Yeah, correct. All correct. right. Sean, where can our listeners go to learn more about fun2rent.com? I think I summed that question up right there, didn't I? Yeah, correct, correct. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, it is. It's fun with the number two in between fun and rent, fun2rent.com. And uh, we also have a 800 number listed on all of our listings, so if they have a, a question, then want to reach out to us and see exactly how it works, we'll be happy to answer any questions through our 800 number as well. Well, Sean, i got to tell you, I am happy that you are on the Happy Camper Radio Show today, and it's been a great pleasure talking with you. I hope you have yourself a wonderful holiday season. We're talking with Sean Gardner from fun2rent.com. That's fun, the number two, rent.com. If you're interested in renting a watercraft, an RV, an ATV, you know, check out their website right now and uh, see what they have available out there. There may be an owner near you where you can go ahead and rent that equipment from them and take it out and enjoy it, possibly this upcoming weekend. Sean, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to tell your listeners uh, more about our platform. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome, Sean. And there you have it, my friends, fun2rent.com. That's fun, the number two, rent.com. If you don't want to go out and buy a boat, you may have one right around the corner from you available to take out on your next camping trip. Uh, a couple other things I do want to discuss here with you. In fact, there's one more important issue that I want to speak about uh, regarding uh, boating, and that is the very serious offense known as boating under the influence, BUI. You've heard of DUI, or in some cases, in some states, it's called DWI. That's driving while intoxicated. You cannot do that out on the lake as well. It is illegal in all 50 states. You are highly discouraged uh, from using alcohol before or while operating a, a boat. You just don't do that because the the fines and the penalties are very severe. It could cost you some jail time. They could The uh, state could go ahead and impound your, your watercraft. You don't need that. Just remember when you're out there driving a car, you've got a responsibility to yourself and to all the passengers in your vehicle as well as everybody else out there sharing the road with you. The same applies when you're you're on the lake. You you got to be mindful of everybody's safety. And boating and alcohol and boating and drugs they don't mix. So you need to stay away from that. And just like Sean said, it's it's going to be very important for you to get yourself some sort of safety training if you've never operated a watercraft before in your life. You want to make sure that you have that at least some sort of formal training under your belt, or maybe some safety class. And, you, and he says, you know, you can find them out there online too. So whether you're going to rent a boat or buy a boat, and even if you do buy one, I'm sure the dealer, wherever you're buying it from, will offer you some sort of a program where you can learn how to safely operate that watercraft and do it safely. The bottom line is you want to go out and have fun. You don't want to uh, get involved in any type of a situation where you're going to put yourself in danger, your family in danger, or anybody else. 
because again, I mean, the, the penalties for BUI, voting under the influence, are very, very severe. At least they are here in Georgia. In fact, we have one particular case that is still open in the local courts where, unfortunately, a young fellow passed away as a result of somebody who was accused of voting under the influence. And I don't know if that, uh, that trial ever came to a conclusion or not. I haven't been following it too closely, but you don't want to be involved in anything like that. Everybody who goes boating is out there to do it for the purpose of having fun. Don't have a fun activity turn into a tragic one. It is time now for our featured campground of the week right here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. my phones my friends <laughs> the pointer on my mouse is not working too well today i think i need some new batteries but anyway there we go pulled it right up here in front of me we are going to take you out to the west coast to the state of oregon we are going to go to the and let me see if i can say this without stumbling over myself it is the blue bay campground located in oregon and it is our featured campground of the week it is one of the few campgrounds out there that is open year round you don't need to make a reservation it's walk-in they have a self-pay station there but it's great it is uh, on our home page all this week you can get drawn into some of the photographs on that website there all you got to do is just check it out here they've got a, a lot of fishing available out there it sits on subtle lake s-u-t-t-l-e and uh, they have flotation devices uh no i don't want to say flotation devices. they have uh float tubes that can be used on this lake they're adequate and waiting is possible waiting is possible in some of the areas a few of the areas are fishable from the shore if you're into fishing they've got uh, brown trout whitefish crayfish it's a great place for anglers they do have a boat ramp uh, and it's uh, and most campsites have easy access to the waterfront so check it out there they've got uh, a place where you can do some hiking if you want to will the wilderness area the lakes the reservoirs the wild and scenic rivers uh, approximately 1600 miles of trails in that area comp comp comprise uh, nearly 2.5 million acres of the Deschutes National Forest. Check out their website and keep in mind you cannot bring firewood from the outside area. You've got to purchase that locally. It is our featured campground of the week. It is Blue Bay, Oregon, and it's right there on our homepage at happycamperradio.com. And as always, if you have a campground that you would like for us to feature on the program, get in touch with me, Skip S K I P at happycamperradio.com. Make sure you include a link to the campground website so that if we decide to feature it as one of our campgrounds, you know, we can do it and uh, toss that tab or toss that link right under the featured campground tab there on our homepage. That's about going to wrap things up for me. It is our final episode for 2013. I really had a great time. It's been a great run so far. I'm so much looking forward to 2014, and I hope each and every one of you are able to join us then. Uh, in the next couple of days, please, if you're going to be out there partying, you're going to be out there having a good time, I don't care if you're camping or you're going out to uh, some place to do your celebrating, please make sure you do not drink and drive. Have a designated driver with you at all times. I hope you uh, enjoy it, like I say, and next week when we get together... We're going to be talking about another important subject that I think you will enjoy, and I will go ahead and keep that on ice until then. The Happy Camper Radio Show is a presentation of Skip Huber Productions. I'm Skip. I am a happy camper. And don't forget, you can catch us online anytime at www.happycamperradio.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker. And add us to your circles on Google+. On behalf of everyone here at the Happy Camper Radio Show, to each and every one of you, have yourself a very safe and happy new year, and we'll catch you in 2014. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.